Okay, so let's talk about these markers a little bit. Um, I want everybody to just take a moment, take a deep breath, and plan on concentrating really hard for the next five minutes. I want you to roll with me because if you do, it'll be worth it. You need to understand this. This is your study. So we're going to be telling, talking about what these markers mean and why, it, why they're important to our bodies. Oxidation is an interesting thing. It's, a, it's an ongoing reaction everywhere in our bodies. Every minute of every day, our bodies are oxidizing something. Now, what is oxidizing? Oxidizing basically is burning. If you strike a match like that and the match lights, the friction causes the sulfur on the match to ignite and it takes the oxygen and it's a fast chemical reaction. It burns. If you have an old fishing reel and you let it sit around, it will eventually begin to rust. Well, what's happening is the metal is attracting the oxygen from the air. A chemical reaction happens and it burns. It's basically burning. It's rusting. Our bodies rust in many different ways. They burn in many different ways. Isoprostanes are the product, basically, of the rusting of the fatty acids in our bodies. Now the bad thing about isoprostanes is if they build up, they promote our low density lipoproteins, meaning our LDL cholesterol. The stuff that your doctor tells you is bad, your LDL cholesterol is too high, go home and da da da, take this, don't eat that, get more exercise. Well, LDL cholesterol in and of itself isn't really all that bad. It's only bad when it oxidizes, when it rusts. Isoprostanes can rust your LDL cholesterol. So we looked at isoprostanes. The Sozo group in the study took their dose of Sozo one hour later on an average in that group, isoprostanes were reduced by 40%. After four hours, they were still down. In fact, the Sozo group was down on an average of 42% over four hours. And interestingly, the control group, the placebo, had an opposite effect. Isoprostanes were largely unaffected by the placebo and in fact over the course of the four hours they went up a little bit. So our next marker is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is one of the regulators for the um, contraction and dilation of our capillaries. It's known as a vasodilator, meaning it relaxes smooth muscle and it relaxes the endothelium of, it's the lining of the arteries and veins to make them just relax. And when the, the, the circulatory system relaxes, it makes more room for the blood to flow through and consequently blood pressure goes down. So NO is a regulator of blood pressure. So this is, uh, it's an important marker to the physiognomy. The Sozo group in the study showed an increase of between 7 and 8 percent after about 60 minutes, which was very good. And interestingly, the placebo group showed a significant decrease after 60 minutes. And I remembered looking at the data and this one in particular was very interesting because the Sozo group of people, for whatever reason, this was a random study. We didn't pre-screen the folks coming in to see if they had high or low nitric oxide levels. We just took a group of people and tested them, established a baseline. It just so happened that the Sozo group 
as an average, their baseline nitric oxide was very low, well, much lower than the placebo group. Placebo group, their baseline was very high for nitric oxide. Sozo flexed its muscle and raised the nitric oxide by seven to eight percent, but it looks like the placebo slacked because it started out with a winning combination of high nitric oxide and it slipped, it went down. So this was a really nice experiment because it showed that for people with low nitric oxide levels, Sozo can really provide a benefit. Another exciting marker that we looked at in the study was C-reactive proteins, commonly called CRP. Many people who go to the doctor to have their heart checked out would know CRP. Physicians and cardiologists routinely look at CRP levels because it is an indicator of heart disease. CRP is an inflammatory marker, and while most of us know it as a heart inflammation marker, it's actually, from a, a global standpoint, more important because it can show a measure of inflammation throughout the body. It's, it's a large inflammatory marker. It's a broad base. So people with high CRP levels, while certainly they would be at risk for heart disease, they may have other afflictions. They might have arthritic conditions. They might have other inflammation-associated diseases or conditions. It's not strictly limited to the heart. So we were, we were really pleased to see that the Sozo group in the study pulled down about 4.5% at the 60-minute mark, which was just a beautiful reduction. Um, there may be drugs out there that are not as effective. I mean, this is frontier ground that we're covering people, so you have to keep in mind that these are new discoveries that are being reported in science. The placebo group, on the other hand, it looks like it stimulated the CRP, which means ostensibly could have turned up the inflammatory marker by about two and a half percent. So you've got a spread of about seven percent there between the placebo and the Sozo group. The next marker that we looked at was this advanced oxidized protein products, commonly called AOPP to biologists, even though the rest of us have never heard of it before. Um, these advanced oxidized protein products are the result of lipid peroxidation in the blood. Now our lip lipids Basically, if you translate lipids into normal English, are fats. Um, specifically, lipids can be cholesterol molecules or fat molecules. But these advanced oxidized proteins are generated when the fats in our system rust. Okay, fats meaning the lipids most specifically. Um, you, could, you could compare it to LDL cholesterol being oxidized. LDL is a lipid. The problem is when the advanced oxidized protein products levels get too high, they interfere with the healthy metabolism of your HDL cholesterol. Those of you who have had discussions with your doctor would know that HDL cholesterol, meaning high density lipoprotein, is the beneficial or healthy cholesterol. And what happens is if these AOPPs get too high, they interfere with the healthy production of HDL cholesterol and foam cells can be made and this foam is a precursor 
to plaque and it accumulates in little bends in the arteries and pretty soon you've got a dike building up there and the foam eventually can harden. Now we saw that the Sozo group was able to turn down these AOPPs by 39% after the first hour compared to the placebo boosting the AOPPs by 11%. So definitely something good is going on there and for everyone who has a heart you have to think about Sozo because it really worked in these two markers. We were really excited to see that the Sozo group showed a 41% increase after one hour in HORAC. Now HORAC is a measure of the ability to turn down the number of hydroxyl free radicals in the blood. So a higher HORAC score means a greater ability to get rid of these undesirable entities. Hydroxyl free radicals are like little toxic avengers that are floating around in our blood just waiting to cause trouble. They're looking for other chemicals that they can connect to that will create toxic substances. And these substances promote inflammation, more oxidation, um, more of this bio-rusting. So it's very desirable to broom them out. And so when we saw this 41% increase in HORAC, uh, we thought this is like the coup de grace, it's the fitting end to a great study. So as part of an ongoing agenda to build what was the initial dream of Sozo to begin with, which was to have a product with arms of science wrapped around it, this is that first step, it's the first layer.